Hi, in this video I will show you a simple way how to create a digital code lock with display and keypad. Buttons can be pressed, code can be entered and displayed, and if number combination is correct, then the corresponding sign appears in the console. I start from an empty project as usual and set it up step by step. Here in the project folder I already have some button sprites that represent up and down button states. If you want to know how you can create such buttons by yourself, I put a link to that tutorial into the description. Also here I have some sprites that represent digital characters from 0 to 9 and one blank symbol. These characters will display the code I enter. Ok, first of all I create new UI canvas that will contain keypad and display. Here it is. Once it's created, I set canvas scale mode to scale with screen size, so all of UI elements will be scaled according to game view size. Next, right click on canvas and create new UI panel. This will be kind of body of the code lock. Scale it down and position it like so. Ok, right click on this panel and create new UI button. It is just a boring button with a default sprite attached. Let's give it a new sprite. But first I delete a text child game object since I don't need it. This button will be 5, so I drag and drop a sprite that represents 5 up button state into the source image slot of image sprite component. The image appears stretched, so to fix it I check in preserve aspect option here. Button rectangle container still has a rectangle shape, so to make buttons align well later I make this rect to be more square. Let it be 100 by 100 for now. Anchor this button in the middle of the panel holding Alt plus Shift keys. 100 by 100 is too big for me, let it be 80 by 80. Ok, I position this button about here and rename it as 5 underscore button. This underscore symbol will act as a divider that will help me to pick only button's name value to detect which button is pressed. UI buttons have several visual effects to show their pressed state. By default, this transition option is set to color tint. I will use a sprite swap instead. And all I have to do to achieve the desired effect is to drag and drop a sprite that represents button down state into pressed sprite slot here. There we go. Let's check it out. Very nice. Let's move on. To control button's behavior, I will use the script named push the button. Here it is. The script additionally uses system and unity engine UI libraries. First of all, here I declare a button pressed event of action type. This event will take place when a particular button is pressed and when it happens, some game object that is subscribed to this event will react to it. In my case, digital display will react to this event, receiving button's value. Also, here is a divider position variable that will contain an index of that underscore symbol in button's name. Button name and button value variables will contain button's name and button's value correspondingly. So in start method, I get button's name string and after that I get an index of the divider position in it. It is some integer number. When I have this index, I can separate button's value from its name using substring method, where I take a set of characters from the first one to the position of the divider. In the case with button 5, this value becomes equal to 5. The same will happen with other buttons. After that I set a listener, which will detect if button is clicked. When it happens, then button clicked method is invoked which in its turn fires up button pressed event that passes button value to a game object ready to react to this event. That's the script. Drag and drop this script to button. Now I duplicate this button several times, so I get 12 buttons. And I rearrange them like so. Select all of them and position about here. Now it's time to rename them correspondingly and give them correct sprites to represent up and down states. This is going to be button 1. I rename it as one button. These numbers at the end of each button's name can be left undeleted. When button is renamed, I give it corresponding sprites for up and down states. Up sprite goes to source image slot and down sprite goes to pressed button slot. I do the same for all of the buttons, including start and hash ones. Once it's done, I create new UI panel inside the first panel, which will be a digital display. I scale it and position about here. 
rename it as display and change its color tint to darker one. Right click on display and create new UI image. This will be a digit. I rename it as character one. Scale it down a bit and position about here. Display usually shows nothing initially, so I drag and drop blank sprite into source image slot and check in preserve aspect option. Very good. Now I duplicate this character three times, rename these clones correspondingly as character 2, 3 and 4, realign them like so and position them, so I have four digit display now. Great. As I have a code lock here, then it appears that I have to have some clue to open it. In this case, it will be ok just to show the correct code combination as displays default state in scene view. So I drag and drop corresponding sprites into character source image slots, like this. This is the correct combination to open a door or whatever. Now it's time to examine the script that will control this digital display. Here it is. This script additionally uses Unity Engine UI library. First of all, here I have an array of sprites named digits that will contain a set of digit images to display. Serialize field attribute allows me to assign this array in inspector and populate it with sprites. Next array of images named characters will contain display digits which will show a code sequence entered. It will be assigned in inspector as well. And code sequence string will contain a code sequence entered according to its name. In start method I reset code sequence and using for loop I make all of displays characters show blank digit sprite. When this array will be populated with sprites, that blank sprite will get index equals to 10. We will see it later. Also in start method I subscribe this script to that button pressed event which was declared in push the button script. So when button pressed event takes place, a digit to code sequence method will be invoked. What is happening in this method? First of all, this method takes a parameter which is passed here by button pressed event. As we remember, a button value is passed here. Digit entered variable takes that button value. So if code sequence length is less than 4, which means that I haven't entered 4 digits yet, then I use switch operator to manage that entered value. If I press the 0 button, then 0 character is added to the code sequence and display code sequence method is invoked, which takes 0 value as a parameter as well. We will inspect that method in a moment. If button 1 is pressed, then 1 is added to code sequence and display code sequence method is invoked with 1 as a parameter. And so on down to 9. No matter how many digits were added to code sequence, I also check if star or hash button were pressed. If star was pressed, then reset display method is invoked that resets the display. If hash button was pressed, then check results method will be invoked if at least one digit was entered. What is happening in display code sequence method? This method takes a number entered as a parameter named digit just entered. Switch operator helps me here again. This time I check code sequence length. If it is 1, then the last character of display gets a digit sprite from digit array according to digit just entered value. So if I pressed 5 for example, then last character of display gets the sprite of 5. And so on. First, second and third character keep showing blank sprites. If code sequence length is 2, then third character gets a sprite of the last character and last character gets a sprite of number just entered. And so on. So here I create an effect when sequence entered goes from right to left just like an electronic calculator. Hope I make it clear. When check results method is invoked, then I check if sequence entered equals to correct combination. If it is, then correct sign appears in the console. If it isn't, then wrong sign appears and reset display method is invoked. In reset display method, I reset display with blank digits and set code sequence back to empty string, just like I did it in start method. An important thing about events. If some script or game object is subscribed to some public event, then it should be unsubscribed when this subscription is no longer needed. Otherwise, a null reference exception can appear in some cases. Scene reloading, for example. So, to avoid that issue, that subscription should be deleted. One of the way to do it is to do so in onDestroy method. That's the script. Select display game object and drag and drop the script to it. Now I have to populate these arrays with objects. First one will be digit array. Size will be 11 to contain digits from 0 to 9 and one blank digit. And now I just drag and drop digit sprites into corresponding slots. 0 goes to 0, 1 to 1 and so on. Blank sprite goes to 10.
very well. Now it's time to populate characters array. It will contain four members, which are display characters. It's pretty simple to set it up. Character 1 goes to first slot, character 2 goes to second, and so on down to four. That's it, everything is ready. Now I can hit play and see how it works. Display is blank initially. Once a button is pressed, number I entered appears on the display, one by one, filling the display from right to left. When four digits are entered, no more numbers can be entered anymore until the display is reset, pressing start button. If code sequence is incorrect and hash button is pressed to check that sequence, then wrong sign appears in console and display resets. Finally, if code sequence is correct and hash button is pressed to check it out, then correct sign appears. Hope you find anything useful in this video, thank you for watching and see you next time.